Ah yes, The Legend of Zelda, the beloved Nintendo game series that I've been playing since I was eight years old. And if you're like, damn, Destry, eight? Starting a little bit late there, bud. Shut the frick up, because I wasn't allowed to play video games when I was younger because they apparently rot your brain. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is my beautiful mother, and God bless her soul, but that's the dumbest f***ing thing I've ever heard in my life. It's a series that bridged generational gaps of gaming with a legacy that spanned over 30 years and made my miserable, depressing childhood slightly less miserable and depressing. I mean, I don't mean to brag, but I've held these games so near and dear to my heart that the Triforce was my first tattoo I ever got when I was 18. So being the massive Zelda fan I am, today we'll be going through every Legend of Zelda game to date chronologically, and uh, I'll just be giving my own personal feelings and rating towards each one. Also, for this list, we'll only be covering the main console Zelda games, so while games like Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages do have a special place in my heart, we'll be excluded as well as all of the Legend of Zelda ripoffs and or cartoons, which, you know, everyone loves. Well, excuse me, princess. So the series began in 1986 with Nintendo's debut title on the NES, The Legend of Zelda, a game that looks like total butt. I mean, when putting this side by side with today's graphics, it's truly awful. I mean, what the hell is this? Show this to the old woman. What old woman? You mean the three pixels on the screen that somewhat resemble what this game thinks an old woman looks like? But back then, this was fucking incredible. Not to mention the incredible ad that brought everyone on board. Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's The Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ghana are pretty bad. Oh, Octoroks, Tech Tikes, Levers too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I was on the fence before, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this. Part of me is sad that they don't just continue to make terrible rap songs anytime they make a Legend of Zelda game. Breath of the Wild, Dude. yeah, can't you see? Homies gather round, yeah, you know what it'd be. Oh me, oh my, what do we do? Zelda is trapped and probably dead. Oh, that can't be good. Yeah, Ganon's back and he brought the gang. The land of Hyrule will never be the same. Oh, yeah. Grab your homies and Tootsie Roll on down to your local Best Buy to pick up Breath of the Wild 2 for Nintendo Switch. And although the game might be a little bit dated, it introduced us to one of the most iconic characters of the series, Old Man. That's, that's his name. You may call me old man. And of course introduced us to the popular line, it's dangerous to go alone, while at the same time confusingly renaming every creature in the known universe to something completely random. What's that? Oh, it's a, it's a, that's a snake? Nope, that's rope. Uh, no? What's that? Is it a skeleton? Nope, that's a Stalfos. Oh, that's a bat. Yeah, yeah, that's a bat right there. Nope, that's a keys. Why? Now while not much can be said about the original Legend of Zelda gameplay, it was still revolutionary for its time and paved the way for a franchise of games that has impacted everyone worldwide. And while I haven't played much of the original Legend of Zelda, I can still confidently say it's a 7 out of 10. The next installment of the franchise, The Adventure of Link, was released just one year later and is universally panned for not only being one of the worst Zelda games of all time, but just one of the worst games ever. Even Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Zelda, said The Adventure of Link was quote, sort of a failure. Which is exactly what my father said to me before leaving 26 years ago. Instead of the tried and true top-down look they went for in the original, The Adventure of Link was more of an RPG side scroller that if you thought the first game looked like ass, holy sh! I mean, the f am I looking at? I guess if your preference is to play games with incredibly glitchy women with bowls on their heads, spelling errors, and even more confusing enemy names than the first one, then this is a game for you. Oh, look, it's a bird. Nope, that's Moby. Okay, I'm gonna be real here, guys. I don't even know what the f I'm looking at right now. Some kind of bug thing? Nope, that's a loader. Hey guys, get a loader, this guy. There, there should have been a laugh track right there. And look at this guy. I don't know what it is, but he looks like he wants to sell you your own organs back to you. Hey there, you wanna, you wanna buy your own spleen? No, I don't. Not to mention, in comparison with the first game, the adventure of Link is substantially more difficult in every way, with glitches and poor game designing making it only more difficult to progress. And unlike other games where you can explore towns and get useful hints from townsfolk, this game just gives you seemingly random text lines that make absolutely no sense. Sorry, I know nothing? What are you, Jon Snow? The town is dead. Look east in woods? What the f***? Imagine if everyone was this unhelpful at all times. Hey man, do you, uh, do you know how to get to the highway from here? Wildberries grow east of the western desert. Okay, I'm, no, I'm just trying to get back on the highway. I, I... Leaves are tree sperm. Seek out Donovan for spell potion. Oh, okay. And like the first game, you do get this little beam that comes out of your sword when you're at full health, but in the very likely possibility that you get hurt, it's almost impossible to do anything. 
You do, however, get power-ups along the way that make it slightly easier, but the constant RPG battle screens and incredibly difficult enemies make you persistently say, oh, yay, I got a heart. Oh, f there's a boomerang guy. So that said, while I don't have a lot of personal experience playing this game beyond just simply playing it so that I'm not made fun of for not playing every Legend of Zelda game, I still feel like Miyamoto calling this game a failure is far more harsh than me giving it a 6 out of 10. Over the next few years, the Zelda franchise seemed to go dark. Seemingly forgotten, probably because of how shitty the adventure of Link was. Until BAM! The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past comes out for the Super Nintendo in 1991. And me, a strapping young boy at zero years old. Oh wow, there I am. To think this was just one year before my dad thought I was a failure. How time flies. It wasn't until this game was re-released for the Game Boy Advance in 2002 alongside the game Four Swords that I was able to get my grubby little hands on. It was a game that consumed so much of my childhood. I would steal my friend's game Boy Advance SP, which was the f***ing shit. Play a link to the past to the wee hours of the morning, dodging my mom coming by my room at 2.30 in the morning, like... Destry, what are you doing in there? You better not be playing video games. Mom, go away! I'm masturbating! Oh, okay, that's fine. Good night. It was a time to be alive. It took everything you loved from the first Zelda game and amplified it. And got rid of all that nonsense, stinky shit from the second game. Ugh! Pfft, yuck! Not only were the graphics themselves greatly improved with the jump to the Super Nintendo, but everything from the game mechanics to boss fights and combat became second nature. It was the first Zelda game to introduce chickens that murder you if you piss them off. It was the first Zelda game to give the character of Link a purpose in a definitive story that you follow. You're no longer just some dick hole in a green tunic. You're Link, on your way to save Princess Zelda in hopes that she gives you some of her slippery tuna roll. And much like the first game, Nintendo decided once again to write a rap song, this time to try to get their Japanese audiences interested in the game. <laughs> Did it work? I mean... <laughs> The world of A Link to the Past also re-emerged over 20 years later in A Link Between Worlds for the 3DS that once again shattered expectations of what a faithful remaster can accomplish. And then, in 1995, Nintendo changed everything. The N64, a new game console that took all the sh** you thought you knew about gaming and put it in three dimensions. And for a kid growing up in the 90s when all you had was Nickelodeon, Kool-Aid jammers, and a crush on a girl named Sophie Miller, that f***ing bitch, the announcement of the N64 just blew everyone's mind beyond belief. <laughs> And then, just three short years later, a game was released that would set the bar for gaming for years to come. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released November 21st, 1998. And since then has forever been my second favorite game beaten only by Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. It is a perfect game. From the graphics, the music, the levels, the puzzles, and atmosphere, and story. It was a game that introduced the iconic Link role, which I'm not gonna nitpick, but it truly seems like an inefficient way to get around. Yeah, these fairies are dead. And who could forget the valuable life lessons that Ocarina of Time teaches? That as soon as you get a new ocarina, it's totally okay to throw away the old one that a dear friend made for you. Oh wow, this ocarina is much better. This one's blue. And much like Old Man in the original Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time introduces a plethora of new characters, including this lady, the Great Fairy. Oh wait, where is she? Ah! Oh, Jesus Christ! Get your triangle titties away from me! Or who could forget the Scarecrow at Lake Hylia who just jams out to literally any ocarina note that you play. Just does not matter what you play, he's just like, Whoa! That's sick! I wish my friends were like this. So guys, this is a new song that I just made yesterday. Um, just let me know what you think. But that's not to say that everything in Ocarina of Time is perfect, as there are several things within this game that'll make you want to rip out the hairs at the base of your taint. The first of which being Jabu Jabu's belly. Why the game designers thought making an entire dungeon inside of a giant fish's large and elaborate digestive tract would be interesting, I'll never know. Not to mention introducing us to the most ridiculously restrictive gameplay you've ever experienced when escorting the most ungrateful bitch character to ever exist. Not only name calling, but demanding you carry your on your head for the entire dungeon. Like lady, I'm trying to save the world, can you maybe 
baby just fucking walk? You got fucking legs, bitch. Who I failed to mention, after you save her, wants to have premarital relations with you. And don't even get me started on our fat, stinky dad. We'd rather have you, a mere boy of 12. A mere boy of 12. Go into a fish's stomach to get his daughter than maybe, I don't know, look his fucking self. And if I weren't already making a video of every Zelda game, I could make an entire video out of all the things that you could do while King Zora scoots over for several minutes. <laughs> Five minutes later. Are you f***ing serious? Speaking of annoying characters, possibly the worst defender of this is Link's own fairy companion who tells you useless information at the worst possible times. All right, just headed to Hyrule Castle to, oh, okay. All right, let's head on over to get the bigger on swords. So we got, oh, really? Gotta head to the Zora's domain so we got, oh my God! Navi, shut the f*** up! I swear to God, it might not seem that annoying, but it feels like, Navi, what, what the f do you want? Nova is hot. Great! Jesus Christ! Probably the worst temple, in my opinion, though, is the Shadow Temple. And for no other reason than the music is just way too scary. <gasps> and not to mention those hand things that return you to the beginning of the dungeon if they touch you. That's not fun, that's just f***ing rude. Not to be dramatic, but there is a slow burn in hell for the person who designed those Things. Or the mini boss that's bred straight from the furthest corners of my nightmares. Well, what about the fact that the boss of the temple is just literally a guy that wants to play bongos? Imagine you're that guy and Link just comes into your house and murders you for seemingly no reason. What kind of message are we sending to our kids? And of course, everyone's least favorite level, the water temple. Oh God. Which I actually thought was a pretty cool temple. I mean, it introduced Dark Link for the first time since the adventure of Link. The boss was pretty cool. I feel like the only really annoying part about Water Temple was just having to hit the pause screen a dozen plus times to switch between your normal boots and your iron boots over and over and over again. But it should be worth mentioning that this function was later fixed in the Ocarina of Time 3DS remake in 2011. But yes, while I'm a little biased, Ocarina of Time will always hold a special place in my heart. And uh, it's for that reason that I give it the only rating I think it deserves, which is a perfect 10 out of 10. Following up Ocarina of Time as a direct sequel, Majora's Mask was released on April 27th, 2000, and was made by 70% of the original Ocarina of Time development team, and made as a bet to see if they could create a Zelda game in under a year. Which is also why Majora's Mask has the infamous time limit of 48 hours in the game, a feature that's either looked at fondly, or considered to be the beginning of my battle with anxiety, which is carried into adulthood. Like the title suggests, Majora's Mask implemented and focused on a mask system which allowed you a broader range of abilities to complete dungeons. Which as much shit as I give this game was as late 90s kids say, rad my dog. I mean the feeling you get when you slap on the fierce deity mask and slice some boys with your whirly sword. Mm. The only thing I didn't like about this is just how much pain it sounded like Link was in every single time he put on a mask. I have expected him to be done with the transformation and just be like... Smoking. And while a huge portion of the game reuses assets from Ocarina of Time, The Land of Termina and the story itself do stand out amongst the other titles in the Zelda library for being one of the most depressing games of all time. I mean, the entire story revolves around Link saving the land from a moon that, I mean, if I'm gonna be honest here, looks like he isn't allowed within 600 yards of a park or a school. Yeah, look, look at this thing. You want this around your kids? No! <laughs> I'd rather be power bottoming a Goron than live in a world where this fucking moon is staring at me all the time. Just think about it, okay? You're on a date, you're wanting to, you know, get a little get a little nasty. And just as you're about to deploy your patented yawn arm trick, you look up and this fucking moon is just staring at you. <laughs> Dog, I'll take the Teletubby baby face son over this shit. No, thank you. For me personally, the main reason I found myself disliking Majora's Mask aside from the time limit is the seemingly unnecessary changes in design from Ocarina of Time. From the shield, which like, yeah, I guess, you know, you're on a new land, so you kind of want to have like a different feel since you're in Termina and not Hyrule. But the fairies? Why would they just randomly change the design from this to this? What the hell is this? How is this a fairy? Like imagine you're going to get a fairy tattoo somewhere and some fucking asshole puts this on you instead. All right. 
there you go. Well, that's not what I wanted. Not to mention, in my opinion, the incredibly underwhelming temples and boss fights in the game. Weird hopping jungle man aside, the second boss that you fight is a giant goat. A goat! It's even called goat! Like, it's spelled wrong, but that's goat. Like, why would I have to fight a goat? But for a game that used primarily all assets from Ocarina of Time in a new land, Majora's Mask isn't a terrible game, it's just truly left to opinion whether you like the darker tone of this one over Ocarina of Time. And for me, it doesn't really come close, which is why Majora's Mask Mask in my book is a 7 out of 10. In 2002, Nintendo took the Zelda franchise in a completely opposite direction with the release of The Wind Waker for the newly released Nintendo GameCube, which stands out in the franchise not only for its unique, almost anime-style cel-shaded characters and environments that was the main reason for people to like or dislike this game, but also because most of the game takes place on the sea rather than on land. After seeing a previewed version of the game in 2001, fans lost their shit and thought that the graphic style was a joke and seemed like Nintendo's plan was only to market towards kids. Miyamoto defended this though, despite criticism, saying, Games don't necessarily have to feature realistic graphics in order to appeal to a wide audience, and even cited the success of Miyazaki's animated films as a basis for this thought process. Which, personal feelings for Wind Waker aside, I totally agree. Like, there's a reason that my favorite game hasn't changed since 2000. For me, graphics play almost no role in what I think about a game. You can have the sickest graphics on the block, but if you don't make something that's fun and engaging and challenging, no one's gonna wanna f***ing play. I'm also realizing that I'm almost 30, so I'm getting dangerously close to my views on anything being countered with OK Boomer. Graphics don't matter! OK Boomer. Ah! But as much as the developers got, the game proceeded to launch and still remains the most unique out of all the main console Zelda games. Not to mention, the soundtrack is the absolute tits. From Outset Island to Dragon Roost. But let's not forget the f***ing theme song, dude. I feel like this game in particular definitely benefited the most from its HD remake released in 2013, as you don't even want to touch the old game once you've seen the new updated graphics. I mean, good god. As well as adding a range of new features including the super fast sailcloth, which thank f for that, but also the feature that turned the hero of winds into every basic Instagram influencer, the selfie cam. Oops, thank bye to granny who lost her only two living relatives, time to take a selfie. Throwing a pig into the water, let me take a selfie. Fighting thick Ganondorf, let me take a selfie. But let's talk about the hero of winds for a second. Throughout this entire saga, we've known Link as the hero of time, which is badass. But the hero of winds? Which is cooler? Yeah, so I can control time and change history and split it into three alternate universes, no big deal. I can change the wind's direction? It's really not that cool. You'd better watch out, take this! Ah! Yeah, didn't like that, did ya? The wind's direction is now east. How are you doing this indoors? Also, I had the beautiful luxury of playing this game on my gaming channel before the HD remake came out, where I proceeded to be yelled at by my friend for not backflipping enough or backflipping way too much. Hang on. I know. I know. Back I know. No, I know. I know. Backflip? I know, man. You're gonna backflip? Yes, okay, of course you have I am. To so I have a lot of nostalgic reasons for rating this game highly, but even if I didn't have any memory associated with this game, the HD remaster truly brought new life into this game, and therefore I feel like it deserves at least a 9.3 out of 10. Also, the lip animation is next level. The lip animation is so good. Alongside the launch of the Wii in 2006, came the next installment of the franchise called The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, which once again took the series in a new direction, focused more on character realism and pushing the limits of how massive a game world could be for its time. And with the innovation of the Wii Remote, which was just a son of a bitch, a true asshole to even work half the time. C come on! Back to the question, how will a new Zelda game fare with this new innovative controller? And seeing as how I played this game a total of 16 times on the GameCube, Wii, and Wii U HD remaster, I feel like the motion controls, while not perfect, definitely added to the difficulty in a fun way. The feeling when you 360 no scope a moblin was like taking a fat wet bite of a bit of honey. You ever had one of those? God damn, honey. It was like the first time wearing a wolf shirt in public. Hey, sick shirt, dude. Thanks, man. Twilight Princess was also the first game that allowed you to name your horse, and you can believe I made some very mature choices when naming it. <laughs> yes! That's why we named it, dude! Where's that, my pussy? Where's my pussy? That's very immature. Uh... I really apologize. The world of Twilight Princess is massive and rich and beautiful and a completely different take on the world of Hyrule than seen in previous installments, and features some of the most gorgeous compositions of any Zelda game to date. And of 
course, my personal favorite companion, Midna, came out simply because Miyamoto thought Link as a wolf was too boring and needed something to be writing him. After several, and I mean several, concept drawings of Midna were made, they finally decided on the cute Twilight Beast we've come to love. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention you can turn into a wolf in this game. And that's pretty sick. What makes this game stand out to me is just that all the characters are so unique looking. Even random NPCs not central to the main story are filled with such love and care you could just tell the development team had so much fun making them. On that note though, what in Furore's Wind is this f***ing creature? Who just thought, you know what we need in this game is just a f***ing nightmare creature whose only job is to warp you in and out of dungeons. Like, I never use this thing because I feel like it's just a curse to even f***ing look at it. My firstborn will probably be born with a f***ing cleft eye because I stared at this thing too long. I mean, what the f***? And that's not the only creepy thing, as Twilight Princess has some of the creepiest cutscenes in any video game ever. What the f***? Despite that, however, Twilight Princess still remains an almost perfect game in my opinion, with really the only cons in this game I feel are just really nitpicking. Like the speed at which Link climbs vines in this game is ridiculous. This is my genuine reaction to any time I see vines that I have to climb in this game. Oh god. However, hilariously, the vine climbing speed was later updated in the HD remaster for the game in 2016. Which just means that enough people thought it was bad enough that developers had to actually go in and change it. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me, but it is. But as I said, any con in this game can be easily overlooked, just because of how spicy the lore and extremely immersive gameplay is delivered. Next on the list is Skyward Sword and do I hate that game? Here, I'm just gonna slap this rating on the screen. Cool, let's move on. Ah, I'm just kidding, but I do hate that game. And it's no secret, we uploaded an almost 40 part playthrough of this game that at one point I actually rage quit and walked out in the middle of playing. I give up, I give up on that game. I feel like at this point Nintendo was just desperately trying to like innovate again and make it seem different than other titles in the franchise, but how they decided to do that was to set the entire thing in the sky. Woo! Which in theory sounds pretty cool, but when you actually play it and see that there are really only three designated spots that you can land in and explore, and the rest of the sky is just bland and boring, it was pretty poopy. <laughs> Skyward Sword also introduced the main new enemy of the game, Gir... Gir... Girahim? Girahim. Oh, I don't f***ing know. Gahir Ahim. Sounds like I'm f***ing sneezing. Or as I like to call him, the Belle Delphine E-Girl of Zelda villains. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no. You put that tongue back in your mouth. Stop, stop it. I mean, yeah, Zant was a f***ing weirdo, but he doesn't even come close to this level of what the f*** am I looking at? Is this a Zelda villain or a Michael Jackson backup dancer? Either way, I hate it. Also, a really terrible thing about this game is that they make you fight the same enemy about 40 times throughout the game that looks like just a stupid walking pine cone. My anger issues towards video games aside... Destry. Skyward Sword, I feel like, was really the only game of this series that I just consistently didn't like. And that's not the only terrible boss. It seemed like every boss battle in this game was just seriously lacking. Like, this was our genuine reaction to fighting this boss. Really? Also, all the items you get in this game seem like just terrible scrapped ideas from past games. Like, none of them seem very useful or impactful at all. Chief among them, the infinite gust blower. Literally just a bag full of air that blows for eternity. Ah, watch out! Fear me! I'm gonna blow you! Or how about the whip? Alright, I'm about to go take on the most ancient evil of the entire realm. I got a bunch of beetles, uh, some air, and a whip. Yeah, so, watch out, Ganon. Like, it seems like in the other Zelda games, the items you get seemed like they could actually legitimately hurt or at least annoy Ganon, whereas like a gust blower? Take this Ganon! What? I said take this Ganon! I can't hear you! Oh yeah, they also decided for no reason to change the name of Ganon to Demise? Like why? Uh, Ganon just doesn't sound evil enough, you know? Uh, but uh, Demise! Ooh! Ah! This game was also the first to bring on board the newly invented Wii Motion Plus controls, which in theory allowed you to have more precise control over Link's combat abilities and items, but half the time it wouldn't even work. Take this! You f***ing swine. Yeah, I got it. Well, I'm out of breath and I fought two moblins. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Let's do the Skyward Strike. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Get it! Stop! Stop! <laughs> oh! Oh! I almost said it! Oh! Oh! I did it! 
<laughs> I'll admit it was a cool idea, but it was just really poorly executed. You know what? Just talking about this game makes me want to smash a TV, so. That said, I stand by giving this game a 6 out of 10. After Skyward Sword's disappointing critical reaction, Nintendo regrouped and said, wow, this game sucked. Let's take six years and just really think about the next game. And so take six years and think about the next game they did. As in 2017, with the release of the Nintendo Switch, came The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, a game that made you question whether Hyrule was even worth saving. I mean, yeah, I could, but I could also collect stuff and find shrines and upgrade my gear. Honestly, just like, who has the time to save Hyrule? Not me. Link, save me. I cannot hold back Ganon for much longer. Yeah, hold on, I'm just, I'm just fishing right now. Please, Link. Yeah, hold on, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to trap this here bear. I'm going to die. One, one second, I'm so sorry, I'm just trying to catch this lizard. It was the first truly open world Zelda game that made you feel like you were Link and you could just make it whatever adventure you wanted. And that's just, that's just really neat. Although on the note of the title, every other Zelda title has something to do with what the game is about. Ocarina of Time, you got a literal ocarina to travel through time. Wind Waker, you use an instrument to control the wind. Twilight Princess, you're meeting a literal princess of Twilight. But you know what, I'm calling bull on this one, guys. Breath of the Wild? I mean, yeah, there's a load of wild in this game, but I see absolutely no breath. False advertisement, zero out of 10. Don't like it. Where's the breath? Oh, there it is. I found the breath, guys. One of the coolest aspects about Breath of the Wild is that you can play the game any way you want, doing the temples in any order or not at all. Seriously, there's an option to just go and immediately try to kill Ganon without doing any of the dungeons. I mean, are you likely to win? No, but can you? Yes. All right, let's do this. As far as gameplay, Breath of the Wild outshines previous installments in the franchise, making boss battles and survivability much more difficult and tech-oriented. Like, you are going to die. A lot. You might think you're a badass, but because there's absolutely no hand-holding in this game, the second you step out into the VAST open world, you are thrust into this trial and error process of, wow, I cannot fight a Lionel with a stick. Or, oh, so these explosive barrels also killed me. Cool. <laughs> Oh, neat, I'm freezing to death. Take this, you son of- Oh, my sword snapped. Take this! Oh, sweet, I died. But one of the most amazing innovations was the world interaction itself, allowing the player to discover how different chemical reactions affect the world in unique ways. Like carrying a fire weapon ups your body heat, or the opposite effect with an ice weapon. Carrying metal objects into a thunderstorm charges you until you're eventually zapped with lightning. I have never seen a game that does this in such a seamless and amazing way. And in fact, took the developers a year just to develop that one aspect of the game. And here's the thing, I've spent at least five days just exploring Hyrule because it's that gorgeous. You can get lost in this world, especially with the incredibly immersive soundtrack that you don't know if it's good or bad because it's that simplistic and complimentary to the gameplay style. Where in older Zelda titles, you'd roam around Hyrule to, or set out to the sea to, in Breath of the Wild, it's like, wait, shh, guys, guys, we're almost to the one piano note every three minutes. Also, as traditionally seen in Zelda games, Link is only typically seen in one outfit. However, Breath of the Wild decided to change this by allowing you to customize Link's outfit for specific occasions or just to look heckin' cool. Bruh. Oh my. Wait a second, is that, is that, is that sexy Link? It's beautiful. I have the strangest boner right now. Also, hey guys, remember when we didn't want to f fish? Well, guess what? Breath of the Wild introduced us to one of the coolest characters that for some reason spawned an insane lust on the internet to see Link and this red fish creature doing the nasty. I'm pretty sure if you were to pinpoint the exact moment that made Tumblr decide to stop putting adult images on their site, it was the second that this game came out. As the amount of images I've scrolled through of just side on spread butt cheeks will forever be ingrained in my sinful corneas. Also, hey, check it out. It's good to see that they updated the great Fairy to no longer pierce my eardrums and assault me with her triangle titties. Oh. Wait, what? Uh. Is it just a reoccurring thing that fairies are wildly inappropriate? I mean, I don't want to imply anything, but I'm pretty sure Link didn't give his consent to any of that. Not to mention, Zelda in this game is dumb and thick. I mean, she's a little snooty, but my motto's always been, if you got mad booty, you're allowed to be snooty. I thought I made it clear that I'm not in need of an escort. Well, excuse me. Princess. To call Breath of the Wild a masterpiece is putting it mildly. As I previously stated, after my undying love for the Banjo games, Ocarina of Time has always been my second favorite game of all time. Since 1998, my three top favorite games haven't changed. 
until now. Breath of the Wild just truly outshone any other game I've ever played to the point where I had to move my second favorite game of all time down a slot just to make room for this beautiful masterpiece. And for that reason, Breath of the Wild gets in my book a rating breaking 11 out of 10. And honestly, it has me wondering, how do you even follow that up? Well, knowing Nintendo and the Zelda franchise, I guess we'll know in like nine years. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos from other series of mine, click the annotations on the screen. Also, be sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Captain Destus. And of course, check out the new merch at DestMerch.com. A lot of effort went into this video, so definitely huge thanks to everyone involved. Also, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite Zelda game is and why. I feel like there's going to be a lot of polarizing answers. <laughs> That's it, guys. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and fair winds.